The afternoon Ben carries, that afternoon Ben carries the wood frog back to the place where he found it. He opens the jar and gently shakes the frog out onto a tuft of wet brown grass. The frog sits where it landed, its neck moving in and out with its breath. Go ahead, Bella. He prods it with his fingers. At least you get to go home. He nudges the frog again and it leaps away. Ben squats down, looking around him. The rain has stopped, finally. The clouds are passing quickly overhead and he can see patches of blue here and there. A breeze lifts the smell of earth up into the air. Behind him, a shrill call rings out. Beep, 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 beep. It's a spring peeper. The frog was as Tibbets described. Ben is sure of it. He tries to figure out where the sound came from. There's no sign of anything moving. These frogs are well camouflaged. He sits and waits. He hears it again. Beep, 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 beep. Nothing moves. Then he sees it. He's been looking right at it. The frog, no bigger than his thumb, is perched at the end of a stubbly piece of grass. It's brownish green, the color of the grass itself. Across its back, he sees the faint outline of a dark X that runs from both shoulders, the lines crossing on its back and ending near its legs. Ben darts his hands out to scoop up the peeper, but before he gets anywhere near it, the frog leaps into the air and lands with a plink in a small pool near him, disappearing into the murky water filled with dark leaves and branches. Darn, Ben says, but he's smiling. Just seeing the frog feels like a little victory. He squats there for a while, trying to find another peeper, but has no luck. His legs are stiff and it's getting dark. Finally, Ben rises from his haunches and heads back to his house. The sounds of the chorus of spring peepers fill the heavy air. Ben spends the weekend at home. He emails Lizard Man, hoping to hear back from him right away, but he gets no response. His mother asks him if he wants to invite someone over to the house. Ben shakes his head. Isn't there someone? She asks. No, Mom, there isn't anymore. On Monday morning, Ben gets to school early. He pulls out his unfinished math homework, hoping to get it done before the last bell. Danny Martin, one of Frankie Murley's friends, comes up to his desk and holds out an envelope. This is odd. He's never paid attention to Ben before. Here's an invitation to my birthday party, Danny blurts out. It's at the skating rink Saturday morning. We're having pizza. He hands Ben the card and hurries back to his desk. Ben looks at the invitation. He wants to go to the party. He likes pizza and he'd like to be a part of a group of kids, but he can't skate very well. And he's not sure why Danny invited them. It almost seems like he had to do it. His mom probably forced him to invite everyone in class. Jenny flops into her seat in front of Ben. She see, sees him holding the card. Is that for Danny's party? Yeah, are you going? I can't, I have a slim meet. Are you? I don't know. Even though he's never talked to Jenny outside of school, he, wish, he wishes she were going. It'll probably be fun, she says. The pizza at the skating rink is really good. Ben nods. The pizza is good. Maybe that's enough reason to go. Or maybe he could end up being friends with Danny. At lunch, Ben passes by the table where Danny and Frankie are sitting with a couple of other boys. There's no room for him at their end anyway. He chooses a half-empty table near the window and slides onto the bench. Hey, Ben! Ryan rushes up and sits across from him. Are you going to the party? Did you get an invitation? Ben shrugs. Are you going? Ryan asks again. I don't know. Come on, if you go, I'll go. Then we'd have each other to hang around with. Ben gives his milk carton a shake and pries open the top. I really, really hope you can go, Ryan says. Ben feels kind of bad for Ryan. He's a nice enough kid in some ways only he weren't so hyper. Okay, Ben says, hoping he's not making a mistake. I'll go. A huge smile breaks out across Ryan's face. Great, cool, it'll be fun. Ben smiles back. Maybe going to the party won't be so bad. At the end of science class the next day, Mrs. Tibbetts calls Ben up to the desk as the other students are leaving. Ben, she says, do you remember what I asked you last week about doing a little yard work for me around my house? Ben glances around to see if any of the other kids are still in the room. Uh-huh. Sure. I was wondering if this Saturday morning might be a good time. You could help me for a while. I'll pay you, of course. And then if we have time, we could see what kind of little critters we might find in the woods. The toads are out and the spring peepers are calling. Even in the middle of the day, maybe we could catch one. How? 
I tried the other day, but it hopped away before I could get close. It seems like every part of the teacher's face crinkles up into a smile. <laughs> oh yes, they're very quick. Did you use a net? No, I don't have a net. I just use my hands. Oh, a net makes it much easier, she said. I have a bunch of them. My husband and I must, my husband must have a dozen in our garage. I can certainly lend you one. Hunting frogs with a net sounds like a good time, even if it means doing yard work for a teacher first. Okay, he says. He can't help feeling excited. I better call your parents to make sure it's all right. Would you give me your phone number? She hands him a notebook. Okay, sure, that would be great. Then writes down his phone number and hands the notebook back to her. I could pick you up at around 10 in the morning, Mrs. Tibbet says, and I can pay you $5 an hour. Okay, Ben says. Some extra spending money will be nice, he thinks, but catching some frogs will be even better. He heads down the hall to Mrs. Coocher's class. He's thinking about nets and toads and frogs, and all of a sudden, he remembers Danny Martin's birthday party. He smacks himself on the head. Dummy, 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 he says to himself. He'd forgotten all about it. He hasn't told Danny he's coming, but he promised Ryan. Now he's told Mrs. Tibbetts he'll help her on Saturday morning. There's no way he can do both things. Over the next two days, Ben ignores the choice he has to make, hoping that somehow it'll just go away or that something will happen to make clear what he should do. It makes his stomach turn just thinking about it. Toads or ice skating? Kids or science teacher? Mrs. Tibbetts calls and talks to his mother like she said she would, and his mom thinks it's fine. Maybe you'll learn to like Massachusetts, she says, just like you love the desert. Ben doubts that, but he's still excited about exploring the woods. He doesn't even mind the thought of a little yard work. How hard could it be? Danny's party is still a problem, though. He hasn't shown his parents the invitation, but part of him would like to go to the skating rink. Everyone will be there. He did tell Ryan he would go, and he hates feeling left out, which is all he's felt ever since he moved. But then there are the frogs. He can't tell anyone else about working at Mrs. Tibbetts. Other kids would think he was crazy, working for a teacher and chasing frogs instead of going to a skating party. Ben can almost hear the peepers calling. He can't get them out of his mind. He remembers the one that got away. It's going to be hard to catch a peeper. They're fast and they're hard to find in the first place. He just wants to hold one for a minute and feel it in his hands. By lunchtime on Friday, Ben still hasn't made up his mind about Saturday, but he's thinking he should go to the skating ring since he was invited to the party first and he promised Ryan he'd go. As he heads to the lunch table, he sees Danny already sitting there with no one beside him. Maybe I should try being friends, Ben thinks. He's nice when Frankie's not around. Hi, Danny. Hey, Ben. Wanna try your fries, trade your fries for my pudding? Sure, Ben says. He hates banana pudding and he really wants his french fries, but he agrees. He's about to hand over the french fries when Frankie shows up and slides in on the other side of Danny. Hey, Danny, trade you half my fries for your pudding, Frankie says. Danny looks at Frankie, glances back at Ben, then says, sure, yeah, great. Ben feels like a total idiot sitting there holding a handful of fries. Danny starts talking to Frankie as if, as if Ben isn't there. They laugh and joke, and Ben sits looking at his plate, still holding the limp fries. Forget it, he thinks. I don't want to go to your stupid party. When Ben and Agatha get home from school, their mother is waiting for them in the kitchen. She puts some snacks on the table and sits down. Ben, she says, I'm a little confused. About what? Ben asked. I got a phone call from Danny Martin's mother today. Do you know who he is? Uh-huh. She asked if you were coming to his birthday party tomorrow. Did you get an invitation? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? I guess I forgot. Don't you want to go? Ben shrugs. No, I'm going to Mrs. Tibbetts house, remember? But surely Mrs. Tibbetts would understand. She wouldn't want you to miss a birthday party. Don't you think you'd have fun? You might make some new friends. Ben is sick of hearing about new friends. I don't care about that, he says. I told Mrs. Tibbetts I was coming and I want to go there. His mother gets up and goes to the refrigerator. Without a word, she takes out a bunch of broccoli and some mushrooms and goes over to the kitchen counter. She doesn't mention the party again, but his dad does. After dinner, he tries to talk Ben into going. Won't that birthday party be dis birthday boy be disappointed? Aren't kids gonna miss you? His father asks. The frogs can wait. Ben shakes his head. No one cares if I come or not. No one? Absolutely no one. No one on the planet. His father pokes him in the ribs. It makes Ben mad. No one, Ben says. 
And even as he says it, he wonders what Ryan will do when he shows up at the party and sees that Ben isn't there. His father frowns and scratches his head. He always scratches his head when he doesn't know what to do. Ben sometimes teases him about it, but not tonight. It's your life, bud, his dad says, but you need to make some friends here. We're not moving. I wish we could. His father reaches out, wraps his arm around Ben's head, and pulls it in close to his chest. Before Ben can twist out of his grasp, his dad gives his head a vigorous rubbing with his knuckles. I know you do, Ben, his father says, but we're not moving. I know it's hard, and I wish we could bring all your friends and all your critters and even a cactus or two here, but we can't. All you can do is try and make friends here. But I don't want to. Ben feels tears welling up in his eyes. I don't like the kids here. They're idiots. I hate it here. And I still don't even have my box of things for my room. His father gives up, Ben's head, gives Ben's head one last rub and hugs him closer. Well, idiots are everywhere, even in Tucson, but there are good guys too, even in Massachusetts. You've got to hang in there a little longer. And hey, if you're not going to the birthday party, at least you'll see some critters tomorrow with your science teacher. All right, we are going to stop there.